Hey Southview online community, you're getting ready to watch one of our prophetic night sermon messages and we're so excited that you're with us. Tonight we're going to talk about something that I've never, I mean I've never even thought about it to be honest with you. If you've been here several times, you've always heard me to tell you, if you get a prophetic word, what are you to do with it? You test it. You test it and then you test it again. And then you test it again, and you test it and test it until God gives you revelation on it. All right, so there's many, there's many misconceptions when it comes to the topic tonight, which we're going to talk about false prophets. All right, we're in a day and age to where fear is running rampant. Listen, I, I would like you guys to follow us on, on uh, at least Facebook because Prophet Ed Trout has doing, is doing a call to, to everyone to pray with him every once a week because the Lord woke him up in the middle of the night. And, and I know probably a lot of you don't know Prophet Ed, but he's very cautious about speaking anything other than what the Lord tells him. Right. And the Lord woke him up in the middle of the night and asked him, he said, why is my children not calling out to me, their father, in reference to the COVID-19. And truthfully, the answer is, is because our attention's on other things, namely the election. All right, there's, there's so, many, so many things being said about this election, and we as a body have forgotten that it doesn't matter who is the president, it matters who the king is. God is on the throne and Ed even said that the election is more of a distraction from the actual attack on our nation and the world, which is COVID-19. Because COVID-19, they supposedly says, say that it has a 99% cure rate, but it's caused the most fear that I've ever seen in my entire life. So I ask you to join on Facebook, follow 180 Ministries, not to promote us or whatever, but we're do, I'm, I am sharing his videos of his prayer that he's doing once a week and joining him in prayer because we are going to pray until God eradicates this virus from the United States and the world. Amen. And if you've got a voice and you know Jesus, you need to join in those prayers because that is not of God and it's got to go. Amen? So in dealing with what God put on my heart for the, the false prophets is there's so many people speaking right now that it's hard to know what the truth is. What is the truth and what is being fabricated? So I'm going to teach you, according to Scripture, how to recognize what a false prophet is. We've already been teaching numerous times on you're to test the word. How do you test the word? You get into the word, Right? You can't test the word without getting into your book, the only book, the Bible, the word of God. Amen? Amen. And that falls upon who? It falls upon you. It falls upon me. So we've got to get, church, serious. We've got to get serious. We've got to do what God's telling us to do. We have the ABCs of Christianity, the one, two, threes of Christianity, the one, two, threes of how to live our lives for the kingdom of God, how to be free, how to be healthy. We've got to get serious. And I'm, and I'm preaching to myself. So in order to be able to distinguish what words are good, can, is that up on the screen, JC? Uh, what's, what's right and what's not, so to speak, we're going to talk about it. So in Matthew 7.15, it says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. In 1 John 4.1, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many, say many, many. false prophets have gone out into the world. That one alone, when I first read it, just kind of put me on edge. Because if the enemy is who the enemy, who I think the enemy is, he's deploying every trick that he has to get us all jacked up. So he's dispatched 
false prophets into the world to mess strictly with us, to feed us full of lies, to get us off the path of righteousness, to get us to follow something that's not godly, and we've got to reset. We've got to hit the old GPS button and reroute. Amen? There are hundreds of scriptures in the Bible speaking on false prophets. Well, I don't know about you, but if I do something once, it's probably not that important. I just needed to get it done, right? But if I have to do something hundreds upon hundreds, or if I have to say something hundreds and hundreds of times, then it's, it's more than likely it's going to be important, right? It's going to be important to me. I'm trying to get the information to you or like my kids. You know, Angela and I have, have tried our hardest to, to raise our kids up to know Jesus to where they don't make the same mistakes we made, right? So we've, we've preached some, and we've done it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of time, times. And so far, praise God, they're doing really well by the grace of God. So if God says it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, then he wants you to understand that false prophets have been released into our world. A false prophet is not someone who prophesies a word that does not seem correct, but instead is someone who has an evil heart. Understand this, church. This is extremely important. I, I have prophesied over people and then them come back times later and be like, man, that was spot on. And those you love, right? You're like, yeah, man, that was amazing. But what if you speak a word and then the person comes back two years from now and is like, you know what? That, never, that word never came true. Does that mean that I prophesied falsely, that it wasn't from God? Absolutely not. I've got words that I'm hanging on from 15 years ago. And you know what? And I get a little frustrated sometimes. Let's be transparent. And I'm like, come on, Lord. I, I told, I was, tell, I was telling these guys, I said, I had to remind God the other day. <laughs> yeah, right? I had to remind God. I was like, yo, wait a second. Do you realize that this was spoken? And, and I have, I mean, like, we need, to, we need to make this happen. And I know he's sitting up on the throne in all of his glory going, no, I, I, no, I didn't remember that. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> a false prophet is not operating out of love. Okay, so a false prophet's going to operate with an evil heart, and he's going to operate not out of love, right? We've taught and taught and taught that prophecy uplifts, encourages, and edifies the body and the church. Nothing of that is out of anything other than love. It's impossible. It cannot be. I can't lift you up and, and, and love you. Well, the Lord can't. And if it's done with anything other than a, a heart full of love. Right? right? There are two types of false prophets. A person who has invited a spirit of divination into his or her life. And that's covered in Acts 16, 16. You remember when the, the girl, we talked about it, I think the last prophetic night, when the, the young girl was following, following Paul and them around, yeah. and she kept saying, these are men of God. Yeah. These are men, and, and you know what? Paul pulled, well, I, I guess he's older than me, so I should say sometimes I pull Paul, but it's like he was like, okay, I'm, like, you're on my last nerve yeah. because you are not of God. So he stopped it. She lost that spirit. The spirit went away from her. And she could not operate like that any longer. How many of you have seen um, fortune tellers? Or the 1-900 line to call the, the psychic in California for $3.99 a minute. And she's 99% correct. Or your money back. Right? So if, if these folks that are operating in, in that realm, it's not prophecy. It's literally witchcraft. If you're not operating in the spirit of God, then you're not prophesying. You're prophet lying. <laughs> hey, you had one. I get to have one too. <laughs> Come on now. Number two, a person who receives a call on his or her life but later falls away from God. Since the gifts are irrevocable, the person is still able 
to operate in the gifts, even if they are not living their lives for God any longer. Can you believe this? Like, our God is so good that the gifts he gives us are everlasting. He never, never takes them away. Even if, this, is, this blew my mind, even if we walk away from God, the gifts are still there. Now, can they be manipulated? Absolutely, because you're not living your life for Christ at that point. Now, there's seven characters. No, I'm sorry, not seven. The characteristics of a false prophet, according to Matthew 7, they appear to be good. Because here's the thing that I've learned since I've been operating in this gift and God's given us this ministry and, and teaching and raising us up is everybody loves to get a word from God, which you should. But what I've also seen is we've have, we have a trained team that operates with us and we'll have seven people standing up here ready to, to prophesy, to pray, God to move through. And I've been up here a couple of times when for whatever reason, and the line will be right here and nobody else because people are drawn to that gift. They're drawn to a person who operates in the prophetic or if you want to say if a person's a true prophet, that's where they go. When we, we realize that you guys don't need me to prophesy over you in, 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 the, in, well, in truth because you all can hear from God, right? But until then, I'm called to do it. Right, So this is kind of cool because the ultimate goal is to work yourself out of a job. Right, So I could be like, hey, Gloria, I got a word for you. And she's like, it's all good. God just told me. He just told me what he wanted me to know. Right, That's how we all should long to operate. Right, So they appear to be good. They have their belief system founded on a few scriptures. They build their beliefs on sand and not the whole counsel of God, the rock, right? So like I say, tell a lot of people, like my, my prophetic scripture that I like is 1 Corinthians 14 because it talks about desiring all the gifts, especially prophecy and so forth. But if I only lived on that scripture, I'm building my life on sand, Right? Because the entire Bible talks about prophecy. Right? The whole entire Bible is the rock. If you're operating off one or two scriptures, you are setting yourself up to be weak, to not have a solid foundation, and be susceptible to failure, manipulation, or destruction. Right? I know that's heavy, but that's, that's where we're at. False prophets do have power. They do operate with power. Because I just said, right, the gifts are, they're, they're always there. If you're operating out of an evil heart, well, let's just say it like this. Does the kingdom of, of, of darkness have power? They have power, right? They just don't have any authority. The kingdom of God has power, but it has authority. So if you're operating in a in a false prophet or evil heart or not in love, you can still have power. You just don't have authority. Does that make sense? Yeah. False prophets are not operating out of love. Some are driven by self-promotion or financial gain. Right? So I'm going to tell you a story that, that a pastor told me or that a friend of a pastor told me not too long ago. And I'm not going to mention any names. So, but there was a uh, uh, supposedly a, a really well-known prophet and they were at a meeting and this is, this is kind of the stuff that he was doing the Lord's telling me that you're going to write me a check for $100,000 and then this person would be like me and be like <laughs> no he didn't you know what I mean or, and then, you know, or someone would get upset or not feel comfortable and they would Get up and be like, this, no way, that ain't right. That didn't fit right in my heart. And they get up to leave. Then he goes a step further and say, and if you leave, you walk out that door, you're going to die. Oh, wow. I'm like, I mean, I'm, I'm so righteously angry when I'm hearing this story. And then God's like, that's why we've called you into this ministry. 
so you can speak the truth. You can lay the foundation that, it, it, that it's out of love. It's not out of manipulation, right? And it's like last, the last prophetic. We were talking about the word of knowledge. I can give Angela a word of knowledge that her knees are bad and her be blown away if I didn't know her, obviously, and her be like, well, how did you know that? Well, it must be God. But if you don't act in the other gifts and let God heal her knees, then that word of knowledge is useless, right? So people literally are out there for financial gain. And they're out there to make themselves look good. I am scared to death of that. I never will be that man. No, there's just no way, man. I, I, I have fear of God. It's a healthy re- spiritual fear, but I would never be around someone who operated for self-promotion or financial gain. It's not about that. I'll tell you this. If somebody walked up to me today and said, the Lord sent me and I'm supposed to give you a million dollars, I'd be tickled to death. But if it didn't feel right in my spirit, I'd tell that dude to walk on out of here. Then that's just being honest. A million dollars is a lot of money. But it ain't worth going against my God. Amen? I feel like this is like, I don't want to be heavy, but like we got to go. You know what I'm saying? I want to have fun. But I feel like we're, we're punching Satan right in the face right now, and, and, it, and it feels good. We're hitting, like, Papa Chuck, we're hitting that curveball, line drive right back at the pitcher. Five ways to recognize a false prophet. Does the prophet believe in the redemptive work of the Son of God? Now, how would you know that? How would you know if the person believed, if the, the person speaking believed in the redemptive authority of God or the redemptive re- work of his son? You gotta, you gotta use your gifts. You gotta use your spiritual discernment. You have to ask God. You gotta speak to God. What am I feeling? Why am I feeling this, Lord? And the more that you mature, the more you'll recognize when something's not of God and when something is. False prophets will shut down anyone who speaks. They will tell you God tells them everything they need to know. Listen, I am not the only one that hears from God on this planet. I welcome words from other folks. Because what I see or what I've found is I love prophesying over people. I love being led by the Holy Spirit. But you know what happens sometimes? I'm like, I'm like a little kid. I'm like, hey, Lord, I want to be obedient, and I want to do what you're calling me to do. But, man, I could use a word. You know, can, can you get somebody to give me a word? It's like I remember when we would, I think I'll get this right, but like we would say something to Madison or vice versa, and then Lily or Maddie, whichever one it was, be like, well, what about me, Daddy? Do you love me too, Daddy? And that's how I've been with God at times. It's like, okay, God, I've given words and given words and given words. Can you give me a word, Daddy? Can you make me feel good, Daddy? Can you bless me, Daddy? You know, but that's the human side of us, right? So, okay, so false prophets have shut down anyone who speaks because they don't want to hear what you've got to say because they're not operating out of love. They're really not open to what God has to say because it's all about them. Look at me. Look at me. Don't look at anybody else. The spotlight's on me, and you can't have any of it. That's not good. Amen? They are not motivated by love, but out of self-promotion. We've covered that. False prophets often use fear to get what they want and to motivate people to do what they want. Liz, girl, 25 Gs, or when you walk out that door, you're going to drop dead. What have I just done? I've manipulated, and I've sown fear. Because you know, I don't want to die yet, right? I want to see my kids get married and have babies. I want to be a grandpa all someday. But, man, the people that I was talking to was like, I didn't know what to do. It's like, do, do I go to the bank and get a loan? Do I do this? Do, and I'm like, bro, if I'd have been there, I don't know what I'd have done. I might have Holy Spirited him right in the eye. I mean, I'm just being for real because, like, this is important to me. 
This is this right here is 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 what where God's got me. This is my sweet spot. And nobody's messing with that. This this is real. This is what the, what I want to do the rest of my days on this earth. I want to see the captives set free. I want people to know that God loves them. I want to see bondage broken off people. We are called to be free. I don't have time for people to manipulate God's gifts. I'm serious about it. I'll taste somebody. I ain't playing. And I want us all, I really do, I, my heart, God has really put it in my heart that we have to get serious about what God's doing. Church, let me ask you a question. This is, this is off the thing, but God just prompted in my heart. Why are we in the shape we're in right now? That's a hard question, isn't it? And everybody sitting in these seats knows the answer. Because we're not doing what we're called to do. If everybody was operating in the gifts and everybody was, and listen, I'm online family too. I'm, I'm preaching to myself because if I was where I was supposed to be, things would be different, right? But if we're listening to God and we're speaking God's word, if we're reading our Bible, if we're in church and we're communion with our fellowship and our families, we wouldn't be facing the trials we're facing right now in this country or this world. God is going to, one way or the other, get our attention. Can I share a prophetic dream that I had real quick? So God showed me that we're at a, a proverbial Y in the road, right? We can go left or we can go right. We can get serious about God. And we will live the kind of life that God has called us to live. Or we can go down the path, the right side or the right path, and we're going to go through it. Now, it doesn't say that God won't bring us through it much, just like the Israelites. And we're going to be okay. But one way or the other, God is going to have his way. And his children are going to come into alignment, and you are going to do what you're told. Yes, come on. Listen, I, I wish that there's times where I'm like, Lord, don't make me do this. But we've got to, I mean, somebody's got to get our attention. And God, honestly, I feel like most of the time, because I know if I was sitting up there, I'd be like, I've had enough. I've had enough. Take them all to the woodshed. You know what I mean? <laughs> False prophets often use fear, and they are not in covenant relationship with the body of Christ. Covenant relationship, what's that mean to you? I mean, like, man, Southview is my home. I love Pastor Mark and Leanne, Eddie and Rachel, all the elders, all everybody in this church. I love them. One of my, I, I, there's a guy here. I love him to death. It's Pastor Jim O'Brien and his lovely bride. They have a biker, Journey Biker Church. And, but you know what? Here's what covenant relationship is. I can go to his church, and I feel like I'm home. He blessed me. Him and his wife blessed me tonight. Come, and I've been after him for a while. Come on, come on. And I know they're busy. They weren't doing it on purpose. But you know what? When he comes here, I hope he feels at home. When his wife comes here, I hope they feel at home. That's covenant relationship. You come over to our house for dinner, our house is your house. I mean, that's, that's what we're supposed to be like. But we've got to be in the covenant relationship with the entire, listen, entire body of Christ. Right? So in order to be able to have a better understanding of what you're feeling and what you're seeing when it comes to false prophets or being able to understand that a person that gives you a word it may not be 100% correct, or God may be calling you to put it on the shelf. But God will give you insight. He'll give you revelation if you pray about it. But you have work to do also, right? A word just doesn't come, and then, you're, and then it happens because we have a responsibility to do what God's called us to do to see that word come to pass. So in order to be able, one of the main gifts... And we have, I've got some really good friends that operate in this, man. And it is, I like, I'll be like, what do you think? Because that's their inside pitch. 
That's what they hit a home, home run with all the time. So being in covenant relationship, I have people in my life that I can be like, Gloria, what do you think about this? And she is going to be spot on 99.9% .9 of the time because that is a power gift that she operates in. So the gift of, of discernment, to understand or know something through the power of the Spirit, it includes perceiving the true character of people and the source and meaning of spiritual manifestations. So like for me, um, you know, still being in law enforcement, like, Spiritual discernment would be like the bullets in my gun if I have to go to a shootout, right? So if I go to a shootout and I go to, um, to this and I have to use my gun with no bullets, that's probably not going to be a good outcome for me, right? If people are shooting at me and I'm like pew, pew, with my finger, <laughs> probably not going to work out for Mr. Policeman, right? But going into a spiritual place or getting someone speaking over you, and you don't have a gift of discernment, you, you're not going to be able to discern what's going on. I mean, does that make sense? I know that's, I don't know, maybe it's corny. I don't know. But you need, your, you need to develop your gift of discernment. You've got to ask God for that gift, because that is your protection. The Holy Spirit, that's the guy. That's the man. You've got to have him, and all the gifts that go with it. The spiritual discernment will help you understand what you're facing. I've been in places before. Angela and I have done a lot of, uh, a lot of ministry in drug rehab facilities, which is amazing. God does the best work when you hit rock bottom, folks. He really does. I've had people say, well, I'm at rock bottom. I get excited. I'm like, good. Now you're going to see God because you're done. You're out of the way. God's going to move. But there's a lot of things that happen in those places that help you develop your spirit of discernment. We had a guy walk in one night. It's late. And I was like, hey, man, do you go here? And he's like, no. And I said, well, what are you doing? And he said, we, we are curious about what's going on in here. And I was like looking around like, is there more outside? But there was a spirit among, on him, which he got freed and got delivered and got filled with the Holy Spirit that same night. But you have to be aware of your surroundings. And man, the Holy Spirit will let you know. If you're in tune, he will let you know. Do not go in there. Do not. Or if someone comes up and says, hey, you know, you've been around. Hey, let, don't even know you, but let me pray for you. And you're like, mm -mm, nah, no thank you. Because if I don't feel right in my spirit, if God is checking my spirit because of a person, you ain't laying hands on me. I'll be nice about it, but I don't, I don't want that. Because my, my gift of discernment, my Holy Spirit, is telling me, no, no, don't do that. You have to be in tune with that. Amen? Amen? Remember, if you get a word wrong, it does not make you a false prophet. It doesn't. And, you know, it was so funny. I was, I was joking with uh, Rick Padgett before, the, before we started. And, I mean, when I was doing this studying, I was kind of like, the enemy was kind of starting to get in my head a little bit. You know, because, I mean, I'm so cautious about wanting to operate correctly and operate out of love, but there's still apparently something there to where he was kind of able to get into my head a little bit. And, and this, he, God brought me right out when he said, remember, if you get a word wrong, it doesn't make you a false prophet. Because God knows my heart, and I love people, and I love God. And as long as you have love in your heart and you're operating in that love, you are good. And you need to know that. Because a lot of fear keeps you from stepping out and speaking prophetically because you're afraid of what? Well, yeah, man. I mean, I, I got to speak over Pastor Jim and his wife and their church. Five, six years ago, I'd have, I, would have, I don't know. I mean, I'd have probably done it. More than, I don't know. I don't know what happened five or six years ago, but I know what I know now. And when God told me to say it, I wanted to release it. Because if God tells you, it doesn't matter how you feel. You just have to be obedient. God will take care of the rest. It's good. Which brings me to my next point. Well, after this scripture. 
Agabus in Acts 21.10 prophesied the Jews would bind Paul and hand him over to the Gentiles. But in actuality, Paul was bound by the Gentiles and handed over to the Jews. So would some people say, yeah, he messed that up? No. I mean, yes, they would. But the fact of the matter is he was bound. It don't matter who you get handed to. If you're bound, it ain't good. That's the way I look at it. If somebody said, Scott, you're going to be arrested and you're going to go to the attorney center and they arrested me and put me in Williams County Jail, it don't matter. I'm still arrested. I don't care who got the jails wrong. I'm still arrested. So really, people would say, Agabus got that wrong. No, he didn't get it wrong. What Agabus is is human. I am a football bat. I mean, I'm not, I, I, I try to live like Jesus, but I make mistakes. So could I get something flip-flopped? Absolutely. Because I'm human. I mean, I want to be right. My prayer is always to, to never add to or take away from a word that God is giving. And to be pinpoint, sniper-like, straight to the part that it needs to be to. So the person gets the most out of it and the enemy cannot steal it. Right? But that doesn't mean it's going to happen every time. I mean, I'm human. We're all human, right? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but I guarantee you there's somebody that brought their wife that was probably arguing on the way here <laughs> over something. It's, it's happened to Angela and I coming to church. You know, does that make us wrong? No, it makes us human. And it makes us, the enemy has a target on our back. Every one of us. So, you, listen, it happens. And I, we fall for it. But it does not make you a bad person. It does not make you a false prophet. You have to operate out of love, and you have to operate to what God tells you to do. It's, it's really pretty simple once we get our flesh out of the way. Amen? We can, listen, we can and we will get it wrong. So let's just, listen, you're going to be wrong sometimes. It, it, just going to happen. I'm not always right. My wife will tell you that. I can be wrong, <laughs> and, and quite often. But when it comes to following in obedience to Christ and talking about the things that God is giving you to speak, as long as you're operating in love and obedience, that word could be spoken, could be flipped, right? And God is going to fix it to where they receive it the right way. Because that's our God. Do you think that Paul was all messed up when Agabus got that word and flip-flopped the two, the two people that were going to get him? Or the two, you know, whatever? No, he wasn't. He knew what he was going on. He knew that he was on a mission for God. And it didn't matter if it was the Romans or the, the Colombians. He just knew that he was going to be obedient to the call on his life and that he had to go and do this, right? The rest of it didn't matter. So take the pressure off of yourselves and just be obedient in Christ. Amen? Amen. Unfortunately, many Christians don't believe in the gifts, for whatever reason, of the Spirit or the fivefold ministry. They believe when Jesus said in the last days false prophets would arrive, and they think the prophets in the last days are false ones. Well, the Bible says it. He says in the last days, right, false prophets are coming. So, I mean, I can, I can understand where they're at, but here's the other side of it. However, I always love a however, if there are false prophets, then there must be real ones. <laughs> because here's one thing I know about the enemy. The enemy, yeah, man, he is a copycat fool. He is the felony conviction of copyright infringement. He will copy everything that the Lord does, and it is so messed up, and that's what he does. So, yes, are there false prophets? Absolutely. Are there real prophets? Absolutely. There may be people in here that are called to be prophets. There may be people that are in here that just hear God occasionally. Prophecy is for everybody, right? So, let me take this pressure off of you. Like for me, 
I can I hear all the time. Angela gets a word when God releases it on her. Mine flow, hers are like prophetic bombs. When she speaks a word, like everybody gets hit. I'm like, that's pretty cool. But it's difference in callings. I mean, that woman right there has, I mean, I've, I've sat, I've literally sat on that speaker and just been in awe of how God uses her. It's totally different than the way he uses me. Derek, totally different how God uses him. Sandy, Jim, I mean, I've heard Jim, Jim I've heard him preach, I've heard him prophesy, he's a, he's, he's a powerhouse, but he's different than me because God doesn't make the same things twice, right? So your gift is going to look different from mine, and we have a habit of looking at other people's crowns instead of looking at our own. That's a very strong word that you need to hear. God wants you to look at your crown. You can't have mine, or you would have, you would have gotten it, and I wouldn't have, right? So Chris Valentin's the one that says, however, if there are false prophets, there must be real ones, and that is so powerful. And we're learning how to distinguish between the two. Jesus came to fulfill the prophets. Matthew 5.17 said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. So at this point, for people who don't believe that the gifts are for today, and they use the in the last days false prophets will come, I would say Jesus came to fulfill the law and fulfill the, the prophets. Prophecy and all the other gifts are for today. They are everlasting. The word says that the gifts are irrevocable. He doesn't take them back. Well, if he doesn't take them back, then that means they're yours forever. Not till 2019 or not till 2020. They'll go on forever. As long as you're operating and you're alive, you're going to have your gifts. That's awesome. That's powerful. And one of the things that I love is that if you ask for the gift of the servant, the Lord says it's yours. We did this the last time. I'm going to ask you to do it again. I just simply want you to ask God, I, you know, God, give me, the, give me the gift of the sermon. Because that, that is very powerful, and it will help you out so much. It will help you out. You'll be able to see what's coming and what's going and why people are doing the things they're doing, who you need to be around, who you really need to pray for. It's good. But I want you, God wants you, to be able to recognize someone who is operating out of an evil heart or self-promotion when it comes to the gift of prophecy. We've got to have it. Listen, it's time to cut the fat off. We've got to. Because church, here's, here's the truth. If you want what God has for you, we got to get real. If I want my marriage to be the best that it can be, it can't be about me. It's got to be about her. you got to self-sacrifice. Well, God was a sacrificer. I mean, he sent his son, right? So we've got to get to the realization that it's not about you. It has nothing to do with you. It's about what God can get through you. Finances. If you're called to have finances, you got to let finances run through you. You're going to get yours, but you got to let everybody else be blessed off of the gift that God's given you. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for your gift of discernment. I thank you for the gift of prophecy and healing, words of knowledge. I love that you are a giving God. And that you don't ever take anything back. I feel like tonight, Lord, that it was almost a little, it was a little heavy. But I know what you put on my heart, and I know that you're serious about what's coming, what's happening today. And you're serious about your children being able to recognize good from evil 
and being as bold as lions to be able to do the work of God. So, Lord, I pray tonight that this word would seed on their hearts, that they would diligently pray for each other, for this world, for this nation, and that your will be done. Lord, we love you, and we honor you, and we're so thankful for our pastors, Lord, that they bring the word every, every Sunday, sometimes, sometimes three or four times a day, sometimes on a Wednesday. Lord, I just ask that you bless them, Lord. Let them be all happy and, and not have any burdens. Lord, just release your authority on your children, on all of us. And know, Lord, that we love you and we honor you and we thank you for everything that you do. In Jesus' mighty name, we all said, amen. amen.